av Stockholm. Oh man. We are running late. Let's go. We have arrived. Let's go. Okay. One, two, three. Welcome back to Stockholm. We are here today with some of our customers and partners. And together we are going to explore how we can adopt quickly to changes in the world. Now, I'm extremely excited with everything that we're going to share with you today. But just like last time, we're going to save some of the best things for the very end. Now, our focus as a company is the Ombori Grid platform that allows us to create digital experiences in physical spaces. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, it means that we can build apps or user interfaces that runs on digital screens or mobile phones that interact in real time with IoT devices and artificial intelligence that runs on a location. And every experience on the grid is built as reusable apps that can easily connect to an organization's existing infrastructure. And by building everything in this reusable manner, we get a lot of speed and it allows us to move fast and focus on the business outcomes and the customer journey. And this ability to move fast has never been more important than today. And as you know, operating physical on Bori grid for COVID response. And since then, we have worked even closer with our customers to improve on these solutions and to roll it out to their locations. And the on Bori grid is now helping with everything from virtual queues and curbside pickup to occupancy control. And our shop by appointment feature is also used extensively now to assist with things like the Black Week and other sale events so that they can proceed safely. And my favorite example is actually the NK department store in Stockholm, who is letting their visitors book an online appointment with Santa Claus. Now, how cool is that? I am really proud of our team who has worked hard to help with this situation. And even though we have only helped in a really small way, we have reached a lot of people. The Onboard Grid is now translated to a lot of different languages. And it's now used daily in more than 20 countries. In fact, in November alone, there is going to be more than 5 million consumers that use the Onbori grid. Now, we need to acknowledge that we would never have been able to get this kind of reach on our own. This is really the result of a great collaboration with our partners like Microsoft and Etub, who committed early this year to helping and have worked so closely to us to realize this. We started working mostly with retail clients, but these days more and more organizations outside of retail are starting to deploy the Onbori grid. And we have 
two clients with us today to share their experiences with how they are putting it to use. And first up is Thomas Landis from Andermatt Alps. Are you with us, Thomas? Hello. Thank you, Andreas. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for taking the time. Would you mind introducing yourself and Andermatt Alps, please? Yeah, sure. My name is Thomas Landis. I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Andermatt Swiss Alps. Uh, well, my job is, is actually I must provide a perfect customer experience in the digital world to our guests here in Andermatt. Andermatt is actually in between Zurich and Milano, so like 90 minutes away from the city of Zurich uh, and like 90 minutes away from Milano. Uh, what we do, we are a, a ski resort in the winter. Uh, we have great snow and we here sell actually very nice flats uh, in the middle of uh, the mountains. So for people who love sports, we are perfect place to be. Very nice, but I, I don't see any snow in the background there. Yeah, that's right. Uh, due to COVID, I'm now in my home office close to the airport of Zurich. So meaning I'm even for me, it's only 90 minute drive up to, to Andermatt. Uh, but we also we, we're not a poorly uh, winter location. We also have a very nice golf cart, uh, for example, where people can enjoy a round of golf. We are af above 1400 meters of sea level. So in the summer, it's it's chilly, but it's nice. Uh, it's it's fresh air. And in the winter, we have real snow, uh, as, as you should know, uh, from being from Sweden, uh, I assume. <laughs> Absolutely. And your use case is a bit different from most of our other clients. How did you find Omborian and decide to, to try uh, it out? Uh, yes. Uh, well, actually, I found Ombori with the problem we had. We, we knew that, you know, since Andermatt Swiss selves for us, it's very important that we can open during COVID as well our ski region because we we own the ski lift, we have hotels up in the mountains, we rent uh, some flats, and we also have uh, like 17 restaurants up in the mountains. So for us, for us, it's crucial business-wise that we can have a winter here. So we said we we must really focus on COVID because we will not bring it away this winter, but we somehow must secure our guests and we also must secure our employees. So how can we do that? And as a matter of fact, I was actually in the summertime with my kids. I was in Europa Park, which is something like a Disneyland in Germany. And I was very surprised that I could actually queue virtual. So I came back from that trip and said, well, what would be one thing we could actually improve if it comes to a customer experience, but also make it more COVID friendly. And so then we started to queue with, uh, to, we started to, to search with two keywords on Google, uh, virtual queuing, and we came up with Ombori and we found out that they have actually a great solution in the retailing and we said well let's try it let's try to figure out a concept how we could board a gondola of 80 people going every eight minute up the mountain with such solution which is actually designed for a retail project yes and we are really appreciating all the feedback that we're getting from you which is helping us to improve the the platform but how do you perceive the the collaboration so far well, well, the collaboration was awesome. You know, uh, I must say I'm coming back from a very iterative uh, background. So I've used to work a lot with startups and uh, iterate on a weekly basis. And uh, we had actually the luxury in Andermatt that we do have a glacier. And uh, since it's when we opened was still uh, autumn, we, we actually had just a little bit of snow up on the mountain. Uh, so we opened only the ski region for the weekends. So we could really focus on getting the solution right at the weekends, learn a lot, uh, take what we have. Uh, and then during the week, uh, we could actually start an iteration using the learnings, sit down with your team virtually and say, well, what have we learned? What does need to be improved? And how can we actually in a, in a very short time improve the solution? And uh, as you said, we start with the out of the box solution, uh, which you normally use in your retails. And now we have actually a very good solution, which I sell, we could probably resell to, to other ski retailers uh, because we pretty ha much have automated a lot of things. And uh, I mean, best from my point of view, uh, we heard so many great customer feedbacks. Uh, for, for, for example, uh, uh, you know, our, our gondola leaves every eight minutes. And uh, so we have time slots of every eight minutes, which guests can book. And one feedback, for example, was from an American person uh, who owns a flat up in Andermatt was like, that's so Swiss. 
but <laughs> we are on time every eight minutes and skiing. And so also the press uh, reacted very well on uh, our uh, solution. They said, this is how you should do Corona in the winter time because there's simply no queue in front of uh, the gondola anymore, which is actually an awesome thing. This gave us other problems. I mean, the mountain we have uh, at the moment using this solution, we have a capacity of a thousand people, which we bring up in the morning uh, with the gondolas. And now we're facing actually the, the high season where we have 2,400 people at one uh, lift uh, going up in the mountains per hour. And we have uh, like 24 of them. So this is uh, actually a big challenge, uh, but we are already uh, having a great workshops and thinking of a solution. How can we move such a mass of people in such a little amount of time using technology, using the software, using the pre-booking to somehow break the, uh, the, the big queues? Yeah. Absolutely. And we continue to work closely with you and, and look forward on improving these use cases. So thank you again for, for joining us today, Thomas. Yes, looking very much forward to it. Thank you, Andreas. It was a pleasure. Cheers. Cheers. Another really visionary organization, which is now deploying Ombori Grid in completely new ways, is Town of Kerry in North Carolina. So let's see if we can get Terry Yates to join us today to explain more on, on what they are doing. Hi, Andreas. Thank you so much for allowing us to be on stage with you today. Hi, Terry. We really appreciate the opportunity to talk about the Town of Kerry's deployment of the Ambori curbside delivery, as well as the virtual queuing service. Uh, the town's been using this service uh, for several months now. Uh, we've mainly been using it for the delivery of IT equipment and services to our staff who are mainly working remotely from home. Um, this really gives the ability for staff to be able to schedule on their time uh, when they can pick up, pick up equipment uh, or drop off equipment. Um, it really allows our staff to be able to deliver that service efficiently. In addition to utilizing this service, we are also working on the marketing material around it um, as we promote it, uh, not only to our departments, uh, but also eventually to our citizens. Um, we are also working on the rollout plan uh, to our other departments, which include our fleet services, our finance, um, as well as our public safety departments. Um, right now, it's the town's highest priority uh, to keep everyone safe. Uh, as we deal with this pandemic and you know we're really uh, excited and happy to work with Ambori, uh, being able to leverage this innovative technology uh, that allows us to be able to continue delivering our services uh, as well as eventually managing uh, you know the crowd uh, size in our facilities uh, which really ultimately minimizes that unnecessary human contact during the pandemic. Um, really want to thank you uh, for allowing us to share this today uh, with you and the participants. Thank you. Thank you so much, Terry. And I think it's really inspirational to see these new, completely new use cases which are coming up almost on a daily basis on how to use the Ombori grid. One of the key principles behind the design of the Ombori grid is openness and how we allow others to build on the platform and extend on it. And this year we have had a really fun project together with ETUB and a design agency in London called The Marketing Store. And let's see if we can get Nick with us on screen to tell us some more about it. Hello Andreas, how are you? Hello Nick, I'm doing very well, thank you. It's nice to see you here on screen. Are you there? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, so my name's Nick. Um, I'm the client development partner at the Marketing Store. Uh, we are a global customer engagement agency. Um, we're headquartered in Chicago, um, but I'm based in London or my bedroom, as we mostly all are at the moment. Um, and we kind of position ourselves in the market as a bit of a blend. Uh, so we see ourselves as a creative agency, um, a strategic consultancy, uh, a data partner and a technology provider combined. 
Um, so yeah, lovely to be here and lovely to talk to you. Um, and obviously what we specifically wanted to, 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 to go through is um, a project that we worked on uh, with the uh, Danish uh, furniture and lifestyle company, Bo Concept. Um, so what we worked on specifically was um, uh, these installations that we came to reference experience spots. Um, and the first of these was titled Extraordinary Transformations. Um, and what we were doing with Extraordinary Transformations was um, using video content to highlight consumer stories from across the globe, um, illustrating how both concepts interior designers had enabled their self-expression in the home. Uh, our other experience point uh, was named Spark Your Style, and, and that was a, a fun design quiz um, that shoppers could interact with. So it enabled them to uh, identify their own unique style. Um, and this was really helpful from a conversion perspective because it allowed both concept stylists to then approach um, the shopper and discuss how that design profile could help them make any space their own. Um, so beyond the interior design service, we then our second subject we needed to really consider was Bo Concept's amazing customization and coordination service. So they have this almost kind of limitless ability to tailor products to your individual needs. Um, and that could be in terms of style, or size, color, material. And um, so to bring this to life, we developed an RFID enabled experience where shoppers could physically touch different fabric swatches um, and then see a product on screen in that particular color. Um, so they were the, the areas that we focused on in store. Um, I think for us, these experience spots are really vital because they allow us to tell a story. Um, and we know that most people come into a Bow Concept store to browse. Um, people have been trained to browse by interacting with products. But really, if we go back to the point around experience, experience isn't made up of products, it's made up of stories. So for us, these experience spots are the first step to better tell the Bow Concept story in the retail space um, and get them to understand the brand's belief in offering. Because once we do, we're pretty sure um, they'll become a customer and better yet, they'll become advocates for living extraordinarily. Um, so whilst we are incredibly excited by the project output, we really enjoyed the process as well. Uh, we worked with Ombori uh, entirely remotely in the earlier part of the year. Um, and it was very much a collaborative effort between ourselves along with our two uh, main Bo Concept clients um, on this project, Michael and Yetta. Um, I think the technical team who worked on this um, found working with the Onbori, Onbori grid uh, very uh, intuitive. Um, and because of that, they were able to create a tailored retail experience at speed, but also a quality that mirrors Bo Concepts premium offering. Um, and for us, this was, was great. I think combining out of the box functionality, such as the animations and the RFID, um, together with a highly responsive technology, um, that enabled us to concentrate on the content and design, um, and that massively reduced the time to market of the product too. Um, and we were working against tight timings for this for a store launch in Japan, um, and we're really see, pleased to now see it's been rolled out across the globe, uh, most recently in Dortmund in Germany as well. Um, so I think for us, whilst we're really excited to see how they perform, um, the experience spots for us are very much just the start. Um, they're touch points that we can evolve as we further develop the brand um, and working uh, with even more of the functionality um, of the hardware and uh, what Onbori is bringing to the party as well. Um, and for us, we will continue to look at more ways to augment the sort of tangible experience of seeing and feeling uh, both concepts beautiful products. And I mean, it, it's a really beautiful experience that, that you have created. And I'm delighted to see how you're using things like the RFID readers with the screens and the customer's own mobile phone to create this intuitive customer uh, journey. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Look forward to continuing the collaboration and see what you will build in the future. Thank you. You too. Cheers, Andreas. Cheers, Nick. And while we are on the topic of collaboration, we have a new partnership today that we are really excited to announce. And it is Bambooser. And with us to tell us more about what they do, we have their CEO, Mariam, that I would like to welcome on stage. Welcome, Mariam. Thank you, Andreas. Nice to be here. Would you mind telling us some more about what you are doing? Of course. So Bambooser is... Uh... Uh, has done live video uh, since a decade back. Um, so we launched live video shopping to the West world 
uh, around one and a half year ago. This is a huge trend that is coming from China and it, it has really disrupted the whole e-commerce uh, game in, in China. And China is by far the biggest e-commerce market in the world, looking globally. So what is live video shopping? We started out with a product we call One to Many. So you, you have a direct dialogue with your end consumer on your own e-commerce platform um, where you place an iframe and in the iframe there's a lot of interactivity. So you can chat, you can like, you can add products to cart, you can do polls. Yeah, there's a lot of interactivity in, in the player. Uh, and then you push the, the customer to the checkout. Um, so we launched this, like I said, one and a half year ago. We have had a huge success uh, globally, if you look at the Western world. Um, and then we saw, when, when we rolled the one to many product out, we saw a big um, or a huge <laughs> uh, demand for the same, the same functionality, but having one to one. So one person hosting and another person looking and getting help or customer service. Uh, so we see it as a new way of communicating with the end customer and, and, and a sort of enabling them to a more modern omnichannel way to, to have, you know, have help uh, digitally instead of being in a store. Um, we went live with Shell and Company uh, around um, this summer and we're very proud of our having them being the first pilot out with the one-to-one -one product. Mm. It really sounds like a much more personal online experience and I actually see that Martin from Shell Company has already joined Hello, us. Hello Andreas and Mariam. Hey Martin. Great to be Hi, here. Martin. Great to be part of the discussion. Uh, let me just go back a little bit and talk about uh, us at Shell Company. We're a, a re retailer and an e-commerce player in Norway and Sweden, and we sell uh, uh, consumer electronics uh, accessories mostly, uh, a lot of cool tech products where we help our customers in a very unique way, where we uh, meet our, all customers face-to-face -face, uh, in the store and also give them a lot of uh, counseling, advice on how to get the best out of technology and uh, experience technology in a, in a way they didn't know was possible. So during this pandemic in the spring, we we saw a, a new opportunity uh, with the uh, Bambuser platform with the first the live shopping, uh, which we uh, have implemented and uh, done a lot of uh, live streams, which have been very success, uh, successful, but also uh, the one to one uh, uh, functionality that we were really eager about and uh, started implementing uh, in the summer. And uh, this one-to-one -one functionality is sort of like taking the digital uh, uh, to the to the store and vice versa to have the uh, store experience that our customers were very fond of and very appreciative of uh, getting that to our shell.com e-commerce site. So what happens is you go to the shell.com, you start a live meeting and uh, you're being routed to one of our stores and you have a video call on top of the website. Uh, no apps required. You can do it on your device, your uh, smartphone, uh, your tablet, your computer. It doesn't matter. Uh, as long as you can uh, go to shell.com, you can have that video call. And when the call starts, you, you see each other just like a regular video call but you can also be presented products where the salesperson drags out products on the screen and compares them and uh, shows them from different angles. Cool. And then they put them in the cart uh, for you. So it's like a personal shopping experience. So you can ask your questions, you can, you can talk about what you want to achieve with technology and the person in front of you uh, through the video call will help you uh, achieve that just like in the store. And then when it's time to check out, uh, the control is back to you as a customer and you can check out, but we're still with you and help you along the way to, to check that uh, order out and, and get the full solution that you wanted. So then this is really, really exciting for us and something we've dreamt on for, for many, many years to realize. Uh, and now we're, we're uh, at this point to have launched this in, uh, in Sweden, Norway during the fall and uh, have got a really good reception from both customers and, and uh, from our employees. 
I mean, uh, this just sounds ridiculously cool and, and powerful, but usually when you have something that is ridiculously cool, then I, I, I become curious. Is this just something that you're going to launch in a limited pilot for just a few stores? Or are you actually going to make this a part of your, your core business and roll this out? And how do you see the Ombori grid fitting into this, yeah, this picture? Yeah, that's a great question because um... We could, of course, do this as a proof concept, and it would stay there. But that wouldn't that wouldn't reach our main goal to to create the best customer experience in in retail. And and uh, seeing the possibilities uh, makes us also look at how can we scale this efficiently uh, and and uh, smart, uh, so that we can use the whole store network and all the good uh, employees and salesperson we have that are knowledgeable and uh, and uh, well well versed in helping our customers daily so what we've looked at then what the onbori grid uh, queuing system to to make a new uh, centralized omni queue that we call it where we have uh, all our uh, customer interactions in one uh, aligned and streamlined system so that when when we're in the store and we call the next customer, that customer could very well be a digital customer. So if that's the case, you have been routed a digital customer from a one-to-one -one call. You take on your headset and uh, have that uh, discussion with the customer. And then the next customer could be a physical customer in front of you. Uh, it could also be the other way around that you're actually in the store. You want to talk to someone who is uh, have a, a special competence or, or a, a, some some other skill, and maybe that person is not in the store right now, but then the customer could have a digital call with another salesperson from another store. Uh, so there's many possibilities uh, with this, and uh, we see that it could scale very well uh, in our in our current uh, setup and. Uh, Looking at this matching of customer and salesperson, we can find where it's most efficient and where the customer can get the best service. Uh, so looking at uh, the traffic in the store, uh, the scheduling and all these parameters, we can route the call where it's uh, most, uh, most uh, efficient uh, at, at any given time. Absolutely. And uh, we are extremely excited to work with you to scale this up. Thank you for joining us today, Martin. Are you still with us? Thank you so much. It's great being here. Bye bye. Thank you, Martin. Bye bye. bye, bye. Martin. And Mariam, the products that you have are absolutely awesome. And uh, we are very excited about this partnership where we can empower the employees with like an omni-channel queue where they can greet people both with a personal visit in the store and online. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me and looking forward to the collaboration. Likewise. One of the companies that we have the longest and closest collaborations with is Microsoft. And during our event this summer, we had Linda Pimmeshofer on stage to tell us about how this collaboration started. And I am delighted to welcome her back on stage today. As an industry executive at Microsoft, focusing on retail, one persistent topic is how to keep, the pace, how to keep up with the pace of the customer expectations. Because whether we are online or in store, in app or in social, customers expect to get this personal, consistent, secure and friction-free customer experience. And that is where technology can help and where you have built extraordinary examples showing how technology really can push the physical customer experience into the future. How we can see tech enables customers to search the whole range of products, getting rich product information, uh, visualize reviews from other customers, stuff that we love in the digital shopping experience. We can also see how we can get this one customer journey, where we can start in the digital world, shopping in the app, going into a store to get more information, um, maybe asking a store employee for functionality or find a garment to try on, um, 
order home or just skip the line and pay in the, in the mobile. This is the future and I think we see it. But today I would love to not only talk about these obvious values for both customers and retailers, but the not so obvious one, the data. And the value of all the data we can collect when we digitalize the customer journey and all the steps in it. Because it's not so easy to keep track of what happens in the, in the physical store as we can in the digital observational data about who the customer is, uh, which spaces that is underutilized, which is po popular and when, uh, which messages that drive sales, and which products that should be prioritized, when, where and to whom. So, more data means more understanding, and it enables retailers to act faster and smarter. At Microsoft we call this digital feedback loop and I will argue that that is the biggest value of digitalization. When you get this data and insights to flow across your organization, using that knowledge to manage the operation, to build this intelligent business practice, um, using the data to optimize the operation, the assortment, logistic, supply chain, fulfillment, everything. And that will not only gain this extraordinary customer experience, it will also give a more profitable and sustainable business. And it will help with the, the rising um, competitive landscape with these digital natives that already have all of this data, and they are using it. So my key takeaway from this uh, that I want to, to say is that data shouldn't be limited to clicks and streams. Data can come from all around us. We just need to find a way to grab it and to use the knowledge to really manage the operations in a smarter way. Absolutely, I completely agree with you, Linda. And if we are putting this in the context of the, the Ombori grid, where we are using data that we're capturing from things like cameras and IoT devices in real time to empower both the, the employees and the visitors of the location, then we need processing power, right? Yes. And this brings us to the next announcement of this event. And that is that now the Ombori grid runs on the Azure Stack Edge hardware appliance. And I think we'll try to connect Ricardo Mendes from the Azure Stack Edge team to tell us more about it. Hello everyone uh, and welcome. And uh, thank you for my friends at Onbori uh, for giving me the opportunity to speak with you today. I'm Ricardo Mendes, I'm principal program manager uh, on the Azure Stack team. And among other things, uh, I lead our uh, retail uh, scenarios. When we look at retail today, there are um, many ways uh, we can make the retail experience better. I like to call that bringing the superpowers to retailers. Things like being able to uh, uh, deliver uh, AI inferencing at the edge in our stores, uh, AI that uh, enables better insights of how our customers utilize uh, our store show, uh, show floor uh, to improve product placement, to track uh, inventory real time, uh, and also uh, to make sure that new scenarios that we are seeing today, like uh, ensuring that uh, people are safe uh, in stores, ensuring touchless experience, et cetera, those scenarios are enabled. Now, this is all about uh, improving the guest experience and uh, things like uh, augmented reality uh, can help by basically transforming the experience in the stores uh, and helping uh, customers to uh, find products, uh, to even uh, see how a particular product will fit all of that without necessarily uh, having to touch anything. And uh, 
always collecting and aggregating insights across all the different locations. And this is useful for several things to ensure that uh, products are stocked across locations to enable scenarios like curbside pickup and others, meaning that you can use Azure Stack Edge to store a data and that data gets replicated to the cloud. So to summarize, what Azure Stack Edge allows you to do is to run machine learning at the edge, to provide uh, edge compute and IoT solutions, and a way for you to transfer data from the edge to the cloud. And when we look at uh, you know, the ability to manage everything from the cloud as a cloud managed appliance, with a very simple and streamlined way to order uh, the device, you pay a monthly fee, uh, that device is managed uh, from the Azure portal, where you have the ability to uh, define uh, the, the workloads that you are going to push the device, uh, and this all with the standard Azure management tools. So with that said, uh, you can look at this device as a device that allows you to run all the IoT compute and all the uh, machine learning at the edge, get all those insights uh, about your customers, uh, all real, uh, uh, real time. And at the end, it allows you for a better experience, uh, to provide a better experience. And uh, you know, when I look at uh, offerings uh, from our partners like uh, Onbori, I see clearly uh, that uh, those go pretty well with Azure Stack Edge. Azure Stack Edge uh, is the, uh, the piece of our platform that uh, was designed uh, to run uh, such workloads. Uh, and enjoy the rest of uh, the show. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ricardo. Really, really cool. Cool. And I think when we are Looking at the capabilities that Azure Stack Edge enables for Onboard Grid Apps running on location, it is really, really cool. But when we are considering that you can have access to this grade of hardware without any upfront investment and no long-term contracts on a pure OPEX model, then it just becomes a game changer for retail. And we would not have been able to bring such an offering to market. And we are extremely uh, excited about this partnership with uh, Microsoft. So thank you for joining us here today, Linda. Thank you for inviting me. Of course, all of these hardware capabilities would not be possible without the great Intel silicon inside. But Intel really is about so much more than, than silicon. And I'm really happy to tell you today that we are actually teaming up with Intel to scale things up in order to reach more consumers around the world. And we are doing this through their IoT Market Ready Solutions program. And to tell us more about this and the work that Intel is doing in retail, we hopefully have Matt Ward on screen to tell us more. Hi Andreas, and thank you both for the partnership and the opportunity to be part of today's event. Intel's purpose is continuing to enrich the lives of every person on earth, and it's a bold goal and one that can only be achieved with the collaboration and partnership with our ecosystem. And this is why I'm delighted to represent Intel at this event today and really promote the work of Onbori and support the development of innovative IA-based end-to-end solutions that drive both the consumer and the enterprise value. One industry that we're, we're really focused on and paying particular attention to right now is the retail industry. And it's clear that the retail industry has been affected by COVID-19 pandemic. But the closure of stores and the requirements to move to multi-channel experiences was actually you know, part of the challenges pre-COVID as well. And we see some shifts that have taken place, uh, and I'll talk to them now. One is around hyper-experiential retailing. And this is really taking consumers on a journey, driving personalization of experience, and really trying to drive that, sh that experience to, to build out the brand affinity of, of a retail uh, brand. The hyper convenience being the second point, and this is really about the frictionless retailing. So driving friction out of the experience, for example, having the right thing in the right place at the right time to really delight the consumers and, and make them feel comfortable about the, the value of themselves within that brand and also the, the environment of which they shop within. 
And we've seen an increase in the health, safety and well-being linked to the COVID pandemic situation as well. So looking at how we can gain trust of consumers to come back within the stores and also protect the workers and the, the, uh, the consumers in uh, as well. So the Onbori grid solution really helps to solve many of these industry challenges. And, and as I mentioned, again, we're incredibly proud to continue that partnership and drive those type of end-to-end -to -end solutions into, into the marketplace place. And our vision at Intel also is to, to be the trusted performance leader that unleashes the power of data. And it's the refinement of that data that's so important as enterprises look to unpick and unpack the data to drive meaningful experiences, either in that convenience or in that in experiential place. And our journey is to transform a world where everything compute requires technology to both move, store, and process data faster than ever before. And this is another great example of why that partnership with Onbori is so important to us, and also the wider ecosystem partners like Microsoft. With that data being processed at the edge, it enables the faster transfer of information in a connected, managed, and stored way as well, driving maximum value to the consumer and the enterprise. So as I said again, Intel's and and I really appreciate representing Intel here today, and being the uh, on the partnership, uh, the development of the market ready solutions that we have ready to scale with our with our partner base, and also the opportunities to be part of this great event. Thank you. We can't wait to see what we can accomplish uh, together. Thanks again, Matt. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Another new partnership that has formed this year is with Avanade. And they are bringing a new concept to market called the Intelligent Store. Let's see if we can reach Rasmus and Aaron at Avanade to tell us some more about it. Hey, Rasmus. Hey, Andreas, how are you? Hang on, let me take this off. I'm good, thanks, how are you? No, I'm good, I'm good. Hey, say, I'm actually out shopping. Hey, look at this, look at this. Someone needs your virtual queuing. Look at all these people lining up. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. So what's up? Well, we're at the uh, event that we talked about. Like in now? Now? Yeah, right now. Okay, uh, give, me, give me one sec. I'll, no, no, I'll, no, you don't I'll, need I'll to go. This is fine, we can talk like this. Oh, okay. So let's move on. Welcome back. Oh, that was quite the line. <laughs> I'm Rasmus Hiltegaard. I'm with Avanade, where I focus on retail and I'm part of that global team. And I'm joined here today by Aaron Reich. Hey, good to see you, Rasmus, and good to see you, Andreas. Uh, I lead emerging technology for Avanade, and, and a lot of the focus area that we look at is within retail. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar enough with Avanade, we are a global services company uh, that is a joint venture between Accenture and Microsoft. And we've been working with our global clients in retail uh, since we were founded about 20 years ago. Cool. So what changes do you see in retail now? Yeah, definitely 2020 has been quite a ride for, for retailers. I think for all of us, we're, we're sort of hoping to get to 2021 as, as fast as possible. Uh, you know, I think... Early in the pandemic, we saw a lot of retailers initially just responding to everything that was going on at the moment. So is my business going to survive? What does this actually mean? What do I do for the health and safety of my employees? Uh, and then as we sort of hit the summer months and in certain parts of the world, you know, businesses were beginning to open up again. There was a, a little bit of stepping back and a little bit of breathing room to say, all right, how do I sort of reset my business. Like, what does this look like? Where am I going? Uh, what, do, what do we want these different experiences to look like? We know that we've got the shopping experience has changed and, and will change. And so there's more online, but we still have a lot of people that are going into the stores as well. Uh, and, and, and it makes you think a little bit about what are those new innovations that, that sort of may exist. And how do Avanade make this transformation easier? Yeah, that's a great question, Andreas. I mean, when we talk about the Intelligent Store and this continuous evolution to drive true transformation, if you think about it from a, I mean, a full store portfolio perspective, not every store is created equal. So some of your stores, maybe you want all of these capabilities and other stores, maybe you just need a few, but you also need 
the freedom and the flexibility as a retailer to turn these services on and off in a modular fashion. So what we want to do with Intelligent Store is to enable our retailers and our clients to rethink how they're going to reformat the stores to not enable these customizable capabilities to deliver these customer experiences that are actually tuned for those local needs. And then, of course, empowering employees to focus more on the journeys that matter. And I know, Aaron, you've been working long and hard and thinking about how do you drive that employee experience? Yeah, I think you know, we've got to be realistic that we've got a bunch of employees who maybe are not necessarily able to be fully utilized. So how do you think about that across uh, both channels, matching up skill sets and be able to add those into new processes? Uh, you know, that's really where the intelligence store proposition is this blend of doesn't have to be something that is a physical location, but to extend from both the customer experience and the employee experience across all the different channels. It's a good explanation. So Andreas, thank you again for having us here today. We really appreciate it. We certainly look forward to continuing this beautiful partnership with, between Avanade, Onbori, and Microsoft. And we look forward to bringing the IntelliStore proposition to life. Thank you. Thank you, Rasmus. Thanks, Andreas. Aaron. The Avanade Intelligent Store is a truly powerful concept. And it's going to be really interesting to see how far we can take this together. During our event in June, we explained how ETA Group invested in us last year and how we are working together to leverage their extensive experience in retail to create new solutions for retailers. And with us today to give you an update on how this collaboration is progressing, we have Mikael Bengtsson. Welcome, Mikael. Thank you, Andreas. It is a pleasure to be here today on this fantastic event. So my name is Mikael Bengtsson, and just to give you a short recap of ETAB, we are what we create together with our customers. So today I want to share some of the solutions we have provided to the retailer currently here. So we see a lot of retailers, of course, want to provide a frictionless experience to their consumers, but that's not always easy. We at ETAB, uh, we can, uh, and we have helped out in the self-checkout zone, for example. And by doing this without compromising on the security uh, and also not disturb the genuine customer. When it then comes to customers, we do see a big changed behavior. People are recommended to go into the store less frequent now during the pandemic which often result in bigger basket size and today's self-checkout solution are not really built for those big basket size. This is where we have then helped out our retailers with a more efficient self-checkout solutions. Then another uh, request from the market have really to make a safe uh, safe solution for the customer so they feel safe when they approach or getting into the store. And this has been possible by providing information to the customer and the retailer, the current occupancy, for example. Then for inside the stores, retailers also need to provide a safe way to wait in line because people don't want to stand close to each other. You need social distancing. And our solution here should not only apply for those people bringing in their own mobile device. So we have implemented our kiosk solutions so that customers without a mobile device can also grab a ticket. And that's a few of the solutions that we actually helped out, and a lot of them together, Andreas. Yes, and I think it's really impressive to see how quickly you have adapted to this new reality and these changes in, in, in customer behaviors. But th there is one project that we have actually spent a bit more time working together uh, than the rest. And this might, this might be one of the highlights of, of this event. Exactly. And no it's pressure. Funny, it's funny that you mentioned yes. it. Actually. <laughs> yes. So what we do see and, and everyone sees, of course, is that uh, consumers want 
a very easy shopping. They want convenience when they do the shopping, and that's 24-7. So we at ETAB uh, then supply solutions to our retailers that should not only handle smaller number of parcels, but also big states with thousands of parcels in our robotic solution, as well as grocery boxes that is temperature controlled. So that is what we have been working on and we're really looking forward to 2021 here to bring this into the market. Absolutely. That's, that's it for my side, Andreas. Thank you, Mikael. And I think we have accomplished a lot together. If you only look at these past uh, six, seven months and the partnership is just getting started. So it's going to be really awesome to see what we can create together. It's absolute will. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very again, much Mikael. for the cooperation. <laughs> Thank you. And this actually concludes today's event. Thank you so much for spending the time with us. I hope we get the opportunity to co-create a lot of amazing solutions that's going to help you and your customers in the future. Bye for today.